are, are these guys are these guys are actually against me I thought they were mine Hello reformers and welcome back to Mount Blade Warband Native. And when we left off we had just taken one of the outlying castles from the town of Tyr and then the Saranids decided to rear their ugly head against us once again and they have decided to declare war against us as a result. Anyway, as you can see right here I have engaged a couple of vassals and indeed Sultan Hakim himself and so we will be attempting to attack them and win the day. 120 troops against 457. So let's do this. Let us charge the enemy. Now we do have a... oh dear. We do have a battle advantage of minus 5 which means as you can see we have 42 on the battlefield and the enemy has 84. Uh, this should be a bit of an exciting battle. We do have a couple of Rodok sharpshooters that are capable of dealing damage from range and I'm not entirely sure if I have anything else. I have 14 archers on the battlefield at the moment. I do have a pretty large number of cavalry so I'm gonna hope that we can use those to good effect. These guys, they're gonna charge in pretty soon. So I'm gonna need to either distract the enemy in some way by doing this or I'm going to need to do something else I don't exactly know if I can distract them sufficiently enough to get our infantry and archers supported enough to win the day but let's let's see if we can let's see if we can do that I'm telling my cavalry to charge in now just wanted to stop this Lancer from lancing because obviously he's gonna do so much damage if we allow him to get to full speed and I'm just going to try and eliminate just the fodder basically any anyone that I see that I can eliminate in basically one hit or maybe even two we're gonna try and attack them because allowing them to live is just basically allowing my AI compatriots to kind of faff around and, and you know not really knowing what they're doing because I want them to target the fellows that are actually dangerous rather than the ones that are not for example there are Vagia Knights and Rodok sharpshooters and a couple of other people over here so we'll see what we can do as time goes on in this battle it seems at the moment we're doing okay I've taken a look at the casualty report and as long as I can eliminate this fellow without him eliminating any more of our people we should be okay there we go yeah take that take that as well slave driver as you can see there's 13 of us that have been eliminated so far due to unconsciousness and five that have been actually killed and removed from the game uh, it, that sounds that sounds really really morbid doesn't it? it sounds very morbid and very very ominous remove from the game I, 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 don't, I don't know I don't know why I said that but yeah it, basically they have they have been removed from the game but I guess in general most of the units that you will be playing with and indeed fighting with in Mountain Blade don't technically have that much shall we say attachment to you so for example if you're playing a game like XCOM you are going to get attached to your various soldiers because even though they are not particularly animated in the way that they do things they don't really have personalities in the way that they play in the game that kind of influences a little bit how you feel about them and how you think about them for example what about a soldier that runs in there and completely obliterates everything then you're gonna feel like wow that that soldier's really really strong and I want to use that person in every single battle and then the, the you know then there's the guy that is, is like a sniper and tends to miss every single shot and then you're like oh god no please not him you know and, and then you just you, you kind of get those kinds of stories to tell whereas in Mountain Blade you don't really get those kinds of stories you get the stories that are a little bit more generalized in the way that you deal with factions for example like the one time that I was besieged by X faction whoever it may be you know Nords Swadians whatever and then you can tell the story of how you defend it against overwhelming odds I, I've got a ton of those stories myself and anyone that has played Warband will no doubt have those stories too but it's less about the individual units 
It's less about that, unless you make it about the individual units. Obviously, I have in the past, and I think maybe even currently, I have been saying in, in for example, my Prophecy of Pendor series that is currently ongoing, that a particular unit has survived numerous battles and is creating their very own lore surrounding them. And it's, it's pretty crazy how that can happen. Obviously, there are companions in Mount and Blade, but they're a little bit on the lesser scale than the XCOM soldiers that I was referencing earlier. Because if you think about the companions, they cannot die. They cannot be removed from your army as we lose only eight units. But most of them were Sword Sisters, which is actually really bad because Sword Sisters are pretty fantastic units. And losing those, not great. Anyway, let's go into the next round. We have 80 against 180 something or other. So I might actually have to leave a battle at some point. I'm not entirely sure if we're going to be able to succeed in this round, but we're going to see either way. Anyway, as I was saying, we were talking about the companions. The companions obviously do not die, so when you send them into battle, you're kind of like, okay, yeah, you can, you can help me out a little bit and do a little bit of damage here and there, but for the most part, you're not really worried about them in any way, because they're basically just... I mean, they're, they're kind of regular units that cannot die, which is not great. I mean, they do sometimes have stories, which is really cool, and, and obviously the, the stories that the players themselves create surrounding these characters and companions, that obviously means a great deal. But the way that they are, naturally, they're not particularly enthralling or anything like that so I, I guess I guess that does kind of have a bit of the XCOM vibe around it but I'm hopeful that in the future we're gonna see much more in-depth stories surrounding mountain blade companions and, and things like that and I'm not I'm not saying in any particular game here or any particular mod I'm just saying in general it would be really cool to have those kinds of stories be much more at the forefront of these kinds of games because these kinds of games really do benefit from having that personalized touch you know having that kind of experience where you are connected to your units and indeed to anyone that you come across that is a main staple in your army or in your squad or whatever game you may be playing I feel like that really does make a huge difference to the replayability as well as to the enjoyment factor of a particular game. And if any of you have any thoughts on that particular discussion, you know, the XCOM way of doing things where you get attached to particular soldiers and everything, then by all means, you know, leave a comment and, uh, you know, have a good or fun time with some discussion because I always love reading those kinds of comments that are always detailing, ah, that one time where Lezolit ran in against ten something or others, you know, ten Nord Huskals, for example, and survived to tell the tale. That kind of cool thing. You know, a little bit, obviously, a little bit more in-depth than that, because I'm, I'm, I'm obviously just giving an example right here, but that kind of thing is is really, really enthralling to me, and I don't even get me started on the EVE Online stories that can be told, because, well, that game is just amazing in many ways amazing and terrifying at the same time because let's face it you're gonna need so much time to put into a game like that and uh, yeah obviously there are extreme amounts of deception and intrigue and oh, crazy amounts of things but anyway yes let's have a look and see how we're actually doing here well we've eliminated a yeah, pretty decent amount so far but obviously nothing to write home about just yet because we still have not succeeded in this battle. Let's see if I can eliminate these guys from behind. Yeah, there we go. Ah, take out his horse. I was not really wanting to take out his horse, but I guess that's just how it has to be. Maybe we can... Oh, are these guys... These guys are actually against me. I thought they were mine. Oh, well, that's not... That's not too good, is it? That is not too good at all. I'm actually losing a whole bunch of Saranid Mamluks here. And I'm not entirely sure how that is even possible because they're being killed by Saranid Horsemen. How are we losing against Saranid Horsemen when we have Saranid Mamluks? I have no idea. I have no clue. 
how that is even possible, but I guess I should just continue using the strategy that I formulated in the previous round, where we just eliminate the easier units, so our companions and compatriots and indeed our allies can decide to focus on the units that are a little bit more dangerous. Ah, well, it seems like we have succeeded, though, in achieving victory, but at what cost? At what cost? is the big question here because obviously you can see that we're doing okay you know we're actually succeeding in every round so far but we are losing very important units every single time we enter a battle like this and you can see that we've lost 15. losing 15 in an army of 120 is a massive blow against us and you can see here we lost three mamluks because two of them were killed by saranid horsemen which is absolutely pitiful. It's awful. Very, very bad. But we were able to eliminate 174 units, which is really good. So, technically, we will be able to succeed in our battle against Emir Greenwad, who is obviously a Swadian defector, as well as Sultan Hakim by his side. So we will be able to succeed here, but... I don't know whether we'll be able to take Tyr afterwards, and it would be a fantastic boon to eliminate the Saranids because I have just declined, just before I started recording, I just declined a peace agreement by the Kingdom of Nords. Because, let's face it, we really don't want to be, hello, we really don't want to be allowing them to have peace, bolstering their garrisons any more than they already have, because well, we've seen that Telrog Castle, Telrog Castle's very, very close by, and we've seen that they have enormous amounts of defense. I, it, it is just, oh, I don't even, I don't even want to get into it because it's so monstrously terrifying to even think about it because they just have so many Huskals and veterans and. Wow, yeah, I, I'm dreading going over there to be honest. I mean, the main reason why I left the Rodok territories is because their de their defense is just so good. And uh, I, I, I was just basically thought to myself, we're going to have to leave and get a whole bunch of renown so that I can start improving the amount of units that I can have in a battle at any one time or in my army at any one time because being able to have a large army at this point is certainly going to make a huge difference to whether we're going to succeed in battles and indeed in sieges as well but well that really depends that really depends at the moment i'm not entirely sure if we're going to be able to improve our army capacity any further because we've just gained some well sizable amounts of renown and we had about 120 maximum capacity when we started this battle so i'm going to be very interested to see whether my renown has made all that much a, a difference because as time goes on, Renown makes less and less of a difference, and I'm a bit worried that we're not going to be able to field anything above 125 or so. I mean, yes, I know eventually, once you have enough Renown, you should continue to gain capacity in your army, but for the most part, it takes a long time. It takes a long, long time to do anything meaningful in regards to army capacity and obviously leadership is a great thing to do as well but you only gain five spaces from that so it's not really not really very good but there you go sultan hakim did escape i'm going to take emir greenwald prisoner and the rest of them also managed to escape well only the other one emir gulassen and we're going to take a farmer and a peasant woman here and we're going to Oh my, look at that. Nine Swedian knights. Wow, that's pretty crazy. I mean, we did lose a whole bunch of them, so I suppose it is only to be expected that we will gain a, a couple there. Ooh, I actually have no food. Do you see that? I actually have no food. Yeah, we are, by the way, right next to Tyr, and this is what is in the garrison of Tyr at the moment. They have 364 plus three vassals, which makes it a bit worrying. A bit worrying. So what I'm going to do now is not go straight in against Tyr, because that's it's kind of foolish. I don't really have the companion's HP up, and my HP is a little bit low, and I'd also like to buy something to eat, because obviously if we don't do that, 
we are going to starve and our you know our productivity is going to go down our efficiency and indeed our morale is going to suffer a huge amount so if i can go in here and are you serious right now suno are you serious come on suno ah uh, okay well yes three pieces of bread is not going to be enough to sustain the units that i currently have so we're going to have to buy a little bit more I actually have a bunch of space, so I'd like to get much more than that, but it seems like I will be unable to at the moment. But what we're going to do is we're just going to run around a little bit and recruit a couple of people just to supplement our army ever so slightly. And uh, then we're going to head back to Tyr, and maybe we can pick off a couple of Saranid vassals in the surrounding area, because those guys, they need to be sent a message. And the message is... Don't leave your dirty laundry on our doorstep any further. Yeah, that, that doesn't really make sense, I know. But they'll understand. They'll understand that message. It's, it's not a code. It's just very, very simply saying, I'd very much appreciate it if you could leave the game. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just kidding, obviously. Anyway, we're going to help this village just in between, just to break up the monotony of doing field battles and actually do a little bit of a bandit purging. Yes, we can charge straight on into them. I love a horse like this for this particular reason because it literally is capable of going through basically anything with the exception of maybe a spear straight on, obviously. But it's really, really nice to see these heavy horses actually coming into their own. They, they are armored for a reason, of course. We go. Oh yes, there there are 51. 51 mountain bandits is really nothing to nothing to sniff at. They really do have a pretty decent amount of power behind them as well. Because mountain bandits against the unwary traveler, they can do a heap of damage, and they're not as good as the forest bandits. Don't get me wrong, forest bandits are really dangerous, at least in my opinion. But mountain bandits. Not so, not so dangerous, but they are quite dangerous. Anyway, let's just uh, get the honor there for us. And no one was willing to join me. Isn't that... It? That is literally Mountain Blade in a nutshell. It really is. Isn't it? I mean, if you've played Mountain Blade yourself, you'll know. I've just saved this village. Let me ask for some volunteers. And then all of them are like, oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. I'm not going to join you. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, that happens. Anyway. Let's just continue leveling up our Swadians here. Borcha did actually advance in level as well. Wow. He has a lot of intelligence right here. I'm actually just going to increase his intelligence even more because I'd like to get some more trainer skill with him and also some more spotting skill. I think spotting skill is actually kind of useless at the moment because, I mean, yeah, it's always useful, but having eight in it versus having nine in it, I don't think that's really going to make too much difference. But it's okay. You know, it's a decent enough advantage for us to have. So let's level up Barney now. And I, I suppose we were going to be leveling up our trainer skill once more. And we were going to be leveling up something else. But what? Well, I suppose we should go for some Iron Flesh. And make it a nice even 60. That sounds like a good plan. Ooh, who do I spy here? Hello, Emir Voldrat. I am much faster than you, thanks to Borcher's pathfinding, but unfortunately, ah, I am not able to catch you this time. Oh, yes, this time you have escaped the clutches and the jaws of death. But next time you won't be so lucky. And the Nords are once again offering us a peace agreement, which I will be rejecting. And uh, I suppose we're going to just wait a little bit for these vassals to venture out. And we're going to try and prey upon them. But for the moment, that will be it for this episode. A little bit shorter than I would have liked, but I am a bit short on time today. I hope you forgive me. And uh, next time we're going to try and take Tia. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.